In this tutorial, I'm going to address a very important topic. And I'm going to cover what are the situations where you want to use Node.js and what are the situations where it's not a good idea to use Node.js. This is something that comes up in a lot of different discussions. There are people who hate Node.js and uh, they have their reasons. But then I feel like a lot of the hate for Node.js is a little misinformed. Node.js has a certain set of characteristics that are a little different from some of the other similar server-side application platforms. So in this tutorial, I'm going to cover when to use Node.js and when not to because of those characteristics of Node.js, specifically related to how threading and concurrency works with Node.js. So here are the kind of problems that Node.js really shines in. Right? If you were to have these kind of problems and you're applying Node.js, you're building your applications in Node.js, you're going to have a good time. right? So the kind of problems are if it's non-blocking applications, if it's event-driven, if it's data intensive, right, fetching, retrieving, saving a lot of data, or if it's I.O. intensive, which is kind of the same thing. You have input output and you're wait waiting for an external system to do something and you're interacting with external systems and all that kind of stuff. So this is where Node.js shines. So in order to understand why this is so, it's important to understand one important aspect of Node.js, that it is single threaded. Okay, what does single threaded mean? It means that all the execution that happens in a Node.js environment is carried out by one computer thread, by one processing thread. This is where a lot of people express shock and like, what are you crazy? Just one processing thread that's going to block everything else and all that stuff. So this is very different from other similar programming platforms where, which are multi-threaded. We have multiple threads operating at the same time. Okay, that's not what happens in Node.js. In Node.js, you have a single thread, and what it does is actually runs through a queue of events. Let's say you have something that needs to execute, right? You've written a function. Let's say you have written that A equals B plus C, right? So there's some computation that needs to happen, right? So it has to add B and C and put it to A. So whatever those things are that needs to execute, it gets queued up. Right? There is a queue of events that happens, and then that single processing thread just executes each and every event one by one in that queue. Okay, So it executes this particular item, done, then it executes the next one, then it executes the next one. Right? There are no two things that are happening in parallel. So if you go to Node.js and say, hey, I have this thing, can you please execute it? What does Node.js do? It says, no, there's a queue here, go right in the back, after I'm done executing all these things, I'm going to come to you, right? This is how Node.js works. And the way it works is using this thing called the event loop. The event loop is a kind of fundamental concept, which is has very close ties to JavaScript, right? You see an event loop in the browser. You also see an event loop in the Node.js platform. It's basically this loop of execution where it's basically looking at this queue, picking the event that's there, executing it, then picking the next one. And any new event that comes up, it goes way in the back of the queue to be executed, all right? So now, isn't this a problem? What if you have code that looks something like this, right? It's processor intensive, takes a lot of time to compute, right? A bunch of lines which take a lot of time to compute. Well, this is actually a problem with Node.js. If you have something like this, it basically takes up that one application thread and it's doing this thing and nothing else works, right? It has everything else has to wait for this processor intensive uh, piece of code to complete and only then the next piece of code can execute, all right? This is a drawback. You cannot do something like this by default. There are ways in which you can do processor intensive stuff here, but by default, since there's one application thread, uh, if you do something like this, you're just blocking that main application thread, okay? Now, if this is the case, you remember how I talked about Node.js is good for certain kinds of operations, which is, for example, IO intensive and uh, database retrieval kind of activities and all that kind of stuff. Well, those take time too, right? It's not like you make an IO call and get a result immediately. It's not like you can fetch a database value immediately. It's gonna take time for you to send the request and get back a response. Are you blocking that one single thread even there? If so, how is Node.js good in those scenarios? Imagine the situation. You have this 
user on a browser and it makes a network call, for example. All right, it's making a call to the server which is situated somewhere else and that server is slow. Let's say it takes five seconds to return a response. Now, since it's a single thread, does that thread sit and wait? Like it gets this event, right? It gets an event which says, that has instructions to go call the server. It's calling the server, it's taking a while. Is it waiting there, waiting for the response before it executes the next event in, the, in that queue? Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do that because JavaScript is asynchronous, right? Even in the browser, as well as in the Node.js platform, it is asynchronous. So typically when you're working in an environment like that, the JavaScript runtime, whether it be browser or the Node.js environment, the API that results in these kind of long running tasks, for example, making an HTTP request, the API for making the HTTP request either in the browser or in the Node.js environment is an asynchronous API. So when it makes a request, it doesn't wait for the response, okay? It says, okay, I have, sent out the request, I will deal with the response when I get it, all right? So it doesn't wait around. So for example, it immediately executes the next statement in your code and then when the response returns, whenever it returns, it's gonna deal with that at that point. Compare it with multi-threaded, right? In the case of a multi-threaded model, when you have a platform which is multi-threaded, you typically have something called a thread pool, right? They have a bunch of threads, it's not a single thread, you have a bunch of threads and each thread does its thing. So let's say you ask one of those threads to go execute something on a server, right? Make a server call, make an API call. So that thread is gonna go make that call and then it's gonna wait. Something else comes up, another thread handles it, right? Another piece of instruction, another thread handles it and executes it and there are idle threads. So as long as there are idle threads in the thread pool, a new piece of instruction can be handled. But when something is dependent on an external IO, right? Maybe it's making a server call or maybe it's interfacing with some IO, it has to wait because it has to wait for the response to come back and that instruction has to return the response to the next instruction, right? So thread pools with synchronous execution has this kind of a behavior, right? When there is an interface with an external system, it waits. So, how is this different from the single-threaded model? In the single-threaded model, it cannot afford to wait like this because if you have a single thread and it's waiting for something else to return a response, you've essentially blocked execution throughout, right? Imagine you deploy Node.js on a server and then you have this kind of a behavior. One user is trying to make it do something and it's waiting. Now it's blocked it for everybody else, right? It's not gonna work. So the way it works in a single threaded model is using something called callbacks. So here's the idea. When you make a network call, let's say you have a piece of instruction which says, okay, I wanna make this network call. You don't wait for the network call to return. What you do is you tell, hey, Node.js, I wanna make this network call. After the network call has returned, here is this event that needs to be executed, right? It gives that event, that function to Node.js. And what Node.js is gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna make that network call. And after the network call is done, it's gonna take that event and put it to the queue, okay? So it's at this point, it's gonna trigger the network call and then it's gonna move on to the next step, the next event, right? It's not gonna hang around and wait, right? There's no waiting here. It's gonna make the call, move on, and when the network call returns back, it says, hey, this guy asked me to execute this event after the network call was done. It's gonna take that event and put it at the back of the queue, right? It's gonna keep going, it's not waning anymore. So this is asynchronous operation. So it's basically a callback model, all right? So that's how single-threaded operations work. The key here is using callbacks. We're gonna talk about callbacks a little bit later in the course, but know that this is how Node.js operates. It's a single-threaded model. It works with the concept of callbacks. Before we move on, one thing that I wanna highlight is that when I say Node.js is single-threaded, I'm referring to the application thread. There is one main application thread, and that is the single-threaded model I'm talking about. 
there are some people who say, hey, no, Node.js is actually not single-threaded, it's multi-threaded and all that stuff. There are a bunch of things that they could be talking about there. One is that your Node.js app sits on top of the runtime, and the runtime is, I believe, implemented in C and C++ and all that other stuff, and the runtime itself is not a Node.js app, and the runtime could possibly be multi-threaded. As a typical Node.js developer, you don't worry about how the internals work. If you make 10 different calls to 10 different APIs, potentially the internal implementation of those APIs could be multi-threaded in the Node.js runtime. But as far as your application is concerned, that part is single-threaded, except for the concept of worker threads, again, which I'm not gonna cover in this course. But as far as the main application thread is concerned, that is single-threaded. I wanna highlight that because that's something that's usually uh, tends to confuse people up. So this is a reason why these particular applications of Node.js are really powerful. It really shines here. When you have non-blocking I.O., right? So let's say you're making a REST API call. It's ex essentially non-blocking. You're making a call. You're not waiting around. You add an event to the back of the queue when that return happens, and you know what to do with it. So it's non-blocking. Event-driven is also the same thing. So what used to block in a multi-threaded environment, right? You're making an external call, waiting for IO, waiting for something data intensive to return, right? Waiting for an event to return. What used to consume resources in a multi-threaded model is actually more efficient in Node.js because it's not waiting around, it's not consuming resources. It just makes the call and moves along. And when that returns, it says, look, I'll deal with you then, all right? So this is actually the reason why Node.js is pretty powerful for these kind of applications. It's actually more powerful than multi-threaded models. Let's say you have a thread pool of 10 threads and 10 of your uh, events end up waiting for something else. Well, you have a problem because the thread pool is full. All the 10 threads that you have available are waiting. The 11th event cannot do anything, it has to wait. However, in the Node.js model, guess what happens? You get 100 events which wait for an external thing. All those 100 can just sit and wait there because that single thread is gonna keep moving on. It's not gonna sit around and consume resources. So these are the kind of applications where Node.js really shines. There's a drawback though, and this is where you should not use Node.js. Now what if you're working on an event which is not dependent on an external thing, but instead it's compute intensive, right? It has to do a lot of calculations. That is where Node.js really fails. So let's say you have uh, this function, a commonly used example is you're writing a function which computes um, the Fibonacci number or the, the nth prime number, which is computationally intensive, right? It's doing a lot of math, doing a lot of calculations. In that case, Node.js cannot really say, hey, go do that thing and then it you know it moves on. It's not even waiting. It has to actually do the work, right? It cannot pass on to the next event until it does the work because it's actually Node.js which is doing the work. So in this particular case, it just hangs there. It cannot even go to the next event, right? So there's a single thread. That single thread is blocked. So these are the situations where Node.js is not good for. Right? So you don't want to do data calculations, you don't want to do processor intensive operations or blocking operations, because you don't want to block that single thread that exists in Node.js. If you block it, there's nothing else happening. Right? So this is where you should not use Node.js. So with this in mind, there are certain applications which benefits from Node.js. So web servers are a great example of things that are non-blocking. Right? You, have, you have a web server sitting there, when the request comes in, it does something with it, returns a response, and then moves on, right? So this is where Node.js shines because it's an event-driven model, right? It's basically simulating that event queue that I talked about, right? It's basically saying, okay, what's the event? I'm gonna process this, and then return a response. If whatever you're processing requires an external dependency, maybe it's calling the database, maybe it's calling another API, well, guess what? This thing is not sitting here consuming a thread. It moves on, and then you might have 10 requests, 100 requests, which are all queued up and waiting for something else. The 101st request can still be handled by Node.js because it does not consume the thread pool with a waiting 
it uses the callback model. So it's basically saying, okay, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna do this thing, keep moving on, keep accepting new events, and handle, it handles the response when there is an actual response, all right? So web servers are a great example. It also handles real-time servers. This is a bit of a counterintuitive example. You might say, hey, how can real-time servers be a good example of Node.js? When I say real-time servers, I mean like, like WebSocket connections, where there is a continuous connection in place, right? You might say, well, how is that a good example? Because doesn't that consume the thread because you need that connection open all the time? Well, no, because the way Node.js handles this kind of concurrent connections is also using this asynchronous model. So it manages 100 concurrent connections by managing a single thread, because again, it uses this kind of like event-driven model. When there is a concurrent connection that needs some execution, it's only then that it pays attention to it, and then it processes it as an event versus a multi-threaded model where a concurrent connection is actually consuming a thread. So you have 10 concurrent connections, there is resources allocated to keeping those things concurrent, right? That's not there in the case of Node. Node.js is also handy when you're building APIs that are fronting NoSQL databases. When you don't have a schema and you have this kind of like a flexible object model, Node is great for that because JavaScript has this very good way of dealing with this kind of flexible object model. It's pretty flexible in the way you deal with objects. So this is a great example of using Node.js as well. Uh, you can also build command line utilities, which are also, again, event-based, right? You run a command, it does something, and then it exits. So that's also something that you can use Node.js for. But then again, remember, if you're using uh, computationally intensive operations with the command line, it's gonna hold up that one single thread. So the command line user is essentially waiting, which is the model of a command line anyway, so it works fine. Node.js is very commonly used for build tooling, specifically JavaScript build tooling. You see a lot of, uh, like you're building on a single page application, a lot of the single page application build tooling is written using JavaScript because they're written by JavaScript developers. So there's another common use case where uh, Node.js is used. So these are some examples of where you should use Node.js and where you should not use Node.js. And we have covered the asynchronous model of Node.js in considerable detail in this tutorial. So you kind of know why it is so, all right? So with this knowledge in mind, Let's start writing Node.js applications. Let's start writing our first Node.js program in the next tutorial. Let's check it out.